Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all my Code Breaker Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for Post Eternity Code. Wanted to do a deck profile on this very interesting set of monsters we received from the Eternity Code booster pack. These are the monsters that were used by Kusanagi in the Yu-Gi-Oh Vrains anime during his one duel against Yusaku. It was the only time we actually, I believe, ever saw him uh, duel, uh, you know, seriously with his main monsters, which were the Code Breaker monsters. I honestly thought when the first uh, you know, release of these came out in Eternity Code that they were part of Yusaku's monsters, but then I noticed that they were warrior monsters, and then that's when I also realized that these were Kusanagi's monsters from Vrains that he used in his duel against Yusaku when he summoned out Decode Talker. It's a really fun deck that focuses on different effects based on being co-linked or just, you know, pointing to Codebreaker Zero Day and having those different effects, summoning out other Codebreaker monsters from your extra decks. So let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So for the monsters, I am running three Codebreaker Zero Day. This is your only Codebreaker monster in the main deck and the main focus for a lot of your different special summons. Being a warrior monster, I also want to focus on that for the rest of the main deck. But with Codebreaker Zero Day, all link monsters point to this card lose 1,000 attack except Codebreaker link monsters. If a Codebreaker link monster on the field is destroyed by battle or car effect, while this card is on the field, destroy this card. If this card is destroyed by battle or car effect, you can add one Codebreaker Zero day from your deck to your hand so just having the search option for this card and then just being able to set this up so it's pointing to your opponent's monsters is your main go-to play with this card setting it up so then your opponent's link monsters that are pointing to it lose attack and then you can attack over them and then just having that search power using this card destruction with your other cards is a big plus just to add more code breaker zero days to add and reuse from your deck to your hand for the other warrior monsters, you just want easy summons with our main focus being getting out the Link 2 Codebreaker Virus Swordsman and then summoning out Codebreaker Virus Berserker. So I just wanted to go for different warrior monsters that are definitely easy to summon out. So we can go for easy Link 2 and Link 3 plays. So I'm running the 3 Goblinberg, just having another easy special summon of Codebreaker Zero Day. And then if you have the additional summon of another monster before you normal summon this card to special summon uh, Codebreaker Zero Day, it just means the easy way to set up that card for you know pointing to one of your opponent's monsters then being able to use it for another additional play on your field so three goblinberg is just an easy special summon swarm onto the field and like i said that's the main focus with all the different monsters we're running in the main deck the other one being heroic challenger assault halberd with this one if your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters you can special summon this card from your hand and also having the piercing effect and when this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent you can add one heroic card from your deck to your hand so you can search out another Assault Halberd off of this card's effect. Having that easy special summon is a big plus for sure, but also having 1800 attack just makes it another easy way to destroy one of your opponent's cards to make use of. But then also just being able to special summon this card, summon Goblinberg, then use Goblinberg to summon another card means you can then go for the Link 2 and keep the Codebreaker Zero Day on the field to use for the attack lowering also. And also more easy special summoning. I'm running three junk forward. Just with the case, if you go first, it, all this one needs, if you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. So your opponent has to have the monster to summon Assault Halberd. But with junk forward, you just have that easy special summon option. And then you can go with the same play using Goblinberg and then your uh, Code Breaker Zero Day also. And then more and more special summoning. We're going with three Marauding Captain, basically the same as your Goblinberg. More and more special summoning options. You can even create the you know Marauding Captain uh, lock if you have two of them. But more, it's just all for the summoning of multiple monsters onto the field to use. And all the Warrior monsters definitely do work very well together. Like I said, we only have one Code Breaker Zero Day uh, as your only Code Breaker monster in the main deck. But the main focus will be all the different co-link plays you can do with all the other different link monsters. We Run in the deck also. And then just to finish uh, with a good amount of monsters remaining, we run the three Hero Kid. With some of my other hero builds, we do run the Assault play, and I find the Hero Kid play to be a very good one. When this card is special summoned, you can special summon any number of Hero Kids from your deck. So as long as you don't open up any of the Hero Kids, if you, you know, send two of the equip spells we run using Assault, you can special summon out this card and then get two more Hero Kids on the field. And that just means more and more link plays with easy co-links to get on the field also. So three of this definitely does help. I liked it when I was testing out the deck as well for those easy summons and then like I said you'll get the different effects with the different co-link monsters we have using the arrows that they possess on the field also. 
And I also run two Blue Mountain Butter Spy. When you normal summon a monster, you can just special summon this card. It can't be used as synchro material, but with this deck, the majority we're going to be doing is just link summoning. So uh, no harm there. When this special summon, you don't have to be worried about you know the synchro plays. Obviously, you'll just be able to summon this card out and then use it for the additional you know extenders for your link summons. And then to finish off the monsters, I'm just running the three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Just another uh, monster spot. I don't run Call by the Grave in this deck if you wanted to run it just as an option. I We have plenty of special summon options. I'm not as worried as the Ash Blossom play against my opponent since a lot of the special summons come from my hand. But still, you can run this as an option. Or if you want to take it out, you could try running Call by the Grave instead. But that's completely player preference at that point also with this deck. And that is it for the monsters. Like I said, with Zero Day being the only Codebreaker monster, just having the focus be on a lot of the different monsters that can easily summon out onto the field to get our link plays going is why I definitely do like running all of those different warrior monsters. For the spells, being a co-link deck, I want to focus on some spell and traps that definitely do help with just the benefits of having co-linked monsters on the field. So I'm running two zero extra link. You activate this card by targeting one link monster you control that is co-linked to a link monster in the extra monster zone. The target monster gains in her attack for each link monster on the field if a link monster is link summoned using the target monster as material the link monster gains the same attack increase as that targeted monster on the field until the end of this turn even if this card leaves the field after damage calculation if the target monster attacks destroy this card so that's why i run the two just in case the card gets destroyed but having the co-link monsters means you can have an extra boost for your different ones since with virus uh, berserker you can reach some pretty high attack points as well if this was in the main monster zone and it's co-linked with one of your other uh, codebreaker monsters on the field just a good option for power plays in the deck for sure and for the soul play that we are running with all the different equips for the equip spells i'm running one power of the guardians one moon mirror shield one dd uh, r one living fossil and one divine sword phoenix blade you can hit the level four plays as long as you don't open up one of them you can go for the link play but being able to send hero kid is my main go-to play so as long as you still have at least two equip spells in the deck you won't have to worry about that play either with all of your cards and I'm also running the one instant fusion, just another target for a uh, fusion monster in the extra deck with an effect to get out four resources since the code breaker monsters just need two effect monsters. And then the virus berserker just needs two or more monsters, including a code breaker monster. Very easy to accomplish as long as you have the instant fusion and then, you know, virus swordsman, you can go for that link three play. And then for some of the other one of one pot of avarice to recycle resources back into the deck to use reinforcements of the army with the majority of our cards being monsters it's just another good searcher and one monster reborn with this i definitely do like it because then if you have your uh, link monster set up being able to co-link it with another monster that's in your graveyard just goes for more and more of the different plays you want to do even if you summon it and have it point to one of your opponent's monsters in the extra monster zone it's all the better because then you'll get more benefits with cards especially like if you were to special summon your code breaker zero day from the graveyard back to your field pointing at your opponent monster lowering their attack also and that is it for these spells we'll now move on to the traps with the same premise as monster reborn i'm running three call of the haunted just a good option for sure once again i like this one uh, for the fact that it summons them in attack position because the majority of the cards we will be special summoning from the graveyard are link monsters so this is your best go-to card especially just because you'll keep those resources coming on the field to use also and for some of the one ofs i'm running one phantom knights of shade brigadine just an easy special summon an early game being able to set it and activate it if you have no other uh, traps in your graveyard and i'm also running one world legacy sorrow if you have the co-link cards to use you can just negate a spell trap or monster effect that your opponent uses with this card on the field and one world legacy struggle target spell and traps on the field up to the number of co-link monsters on the field destroy them so the more co-link cards you have the more cards on your opponent's field you can destroy with these trap options also if you want to mix around you can even try running two world legacy sorrow or two world legacy struggle depending on the uh, preference you have you can even get rid of these shade brigadine and increase the numbers of any of the other ones going full play set on either or or mixing around the numbers you prefer that's completely player preference up to that point depending on what you want to do also 
And that is it for the main deck. We'll now move on to the extra deck for the Link Monsters. I'm running three Code Breaker Virus Swordsman, one of your main go-to Link Monsters uh, with this card. When this card is Special Summon, if it is Co-Link, you can Special Summon one Code Breaker Zero Day from your hand, deck, or graveyard to a zone a Link Monster points to. And then during the end phase of this card is in the graveyard because it was destroyed while in possession by an opponent's card and sent there this turn. You can Special Summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use each effect of Code Breaker Virus Swordsman once per turn. So the special summon of your zero day is very, very useful because it's, you know, available in the graveyard, the uh, hand, or deck. So you have plenty of options to summon that onto the field to use. And then being able to special summon this card back onto the field just means you can reuse it for some of your other link plays when you have more and more resources in your hand to reuse as well. For the bigger boss monster in the deck, I'm also running two Code Breaker Virus Berserker. You need two or more monsters, including a Code Breaker monster, which can be Zero Day or Virus Swordsman, to summon out. While this card is Special Summon, if it is Co-Link, you can Special Summon up to two Code Breaker monsters from your hand and or graveyard to any uh, zones a Link monster points to. During your main phase, you can destroy spell and traps your opponent controls up to the number of Link Code Breaker monsters on the field. You can all use each effect of Code Breaker Virus Berserker once per turn. So it doesn't say... Uh, you know, co-linked because you can also use zero day. It just says linked, so as long as it's pointing to it, it still counts as being linked. Co-link would be if two arrows are pointing to one another, which can still work for the destruction, but still very, very useful as well. I only run two of this card. You won't summon it out as much as Virus Swordsman, but you still have the option to with all the cards we have in our deck to use. And then for the other Link Monsters that I run in the extra deck, I'm running the one Isolde with the Equip Spells. We already spoke of the easy special summon you can do. Uh, Isolde's Link Arrows are the one thing I don't like about this card, being with the co-Link plays, but you can easily, after you special summon the monster, just link it away with uh, you know your Assault and the monster you summon to get out your Virus Swordsman, just needing the two effect monsters to summon it. I also run the one Underclock Taker, one Code Talker, one Penistag, one Trigate Wizard, uh, for the fact that all of their arrows point so it's very easy to co-link them as well with the monster in the extra monster zone and I also run one nightmare Cerberus one nightmare Phoenix and one nightmare unicorn for more of the uh, you know co-link plays as well I normally like running them just for their engines but still very useful for the fact that their arrows align very well with the different code breaker monsters also and lastly I run the one Saryuja just for the uh, draw power you can get off this card it definitely helps as well and I also run the one Mud Dragon for the instant fusion uh, target to get out another monster to use for our extra deck plays. And as for the go-to plays, like I said, as long as you have the monsters, which we run plenty of in the hand, to make use of, and uh, if you open up the uh, Code Breaker Zero Day, you have the option for easy special summonings, being able to basically special summon out your Junk Forward, normal summoning the Goblinburg to special summon the Code Breaker Zero Day, and just remember if your opponent has a monster in the extra monster zone, to place this special summon card in the proper spot so it lines up with the arrow for your opponent, and then using the other two to link summon into your first virus uh, swordsman and then if you want to go for the link three play having the requirements met having a code breaker monster to summon out your uh, code breaker virus berserker and when it's special summoned if it is uh, co-linked so that's even if you summon it to the spot your opponent has a link monster to being able to special summon another one from the graveyard just makes it all the more plus as well but that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoyed the video. It's definitely a fun deck. I'm not sure if we'll get any more Code Breaker support later on down the line. Definitely would be interested to see what direction they take the deck if we do. But until then, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Twig out.